It's the question many of you are wondering. Can the 6 Arc live up to Hornady's published performance data? That plus a preview of CMMG's Endeavor 300 20 inch AR15 chambered in 6 Arc, all in this video. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. It has been a crazy last two weeks. Hornady launched 6mm ARC, this new cartridge for the AR-15. You could think of it as a 6.5 Grendel, next down to 6mm with the shoulder pushback. Everything's optimized for long high BC bullets. It's got less recoil and more velocity. This could be the best all-rounder for certain scenarios. Varmint hunting, long-range shooting, the Department of Defense is evaluating this and worked on it in conjunction with Hornady for a variety of reasons I won't get into here. What I wanted to do was get hands-on with this as quickly as possible and share those results with you, and that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Just several days ago, I got my hands on some pre-primed, brand new Hornady 6 Arc brass. I've got less than 100 cases, not a whole lot to work with. I've also got the CMMG Endeavor 300. This is a 20-inch barrel premium AR-15 optimized around long range scenarios. It's got a one and seven and a half twist barrel, which makes it, I think, the optimal test platform, really the sweet spot for the cartridge. So what we're going to cover in this video is my initial loads. I have no factory ammo and no load data here. I'm basically flying blind, except I've got quick load. <laughs> I'll get to that in a moment. I've worked up a few different loads and I've got some data and I know that burning question everyone is wanting the answer to. Is 2750 feet per second a viable velocity with Hornady's 108 grain ELDM bullet? I will answer that question in this video and share some other valuable insights as well. Before you watch any further, just know all of the load data and load specifics from this video are completely unverified and unpublished. So use any of this at your own risk. Assume that if you use any of this information or any of this data that you're gonna blow yourself up. Okay, that's my disclaimer. Quickly in the video here, you can read the full disclaimer in the video description. Do not use this load data without cross-checking it. Okay, <laughs> having said that, uh, this was my opportunity to really lean into the quick load software package more than I have ever before and I have further to go. In this exercise, what I wanted to do was take a similar cartridge, similar to 6ARC, and model that in the quick load software, but to make tweaks which would make it more real to life for the 6ARC cartridge. And so I looked at cartridges like the 6AR, the 6 Grendel, and 6mm PPC. What uh, quick load supports is different than what you'll find data for and information with online. Quick load had a cartridge model for six millimeter PPC, and it's very similar to the six millimeter arc, and that's what I started with. I then put some brass on the scale. I did some water case capacity tests, and I tweaked the case capacity for six millimeter PPC accordingly. I was looking at scenarios like what powders are people using for 6 PPC, what are people using in 6 AR, and I started with Varget. I worked up a load, and what I found with the 108 grain Hornady ELDM bullet, I wanted to do all my testing around that. Primarily, I have some 95 grain data to share with you as well, but I wanted to test and validate what Hornady has published and all I've seen so far is velocity data for their 108 grain ELDM factory ammo, which is that 2,750 feet per second. So Varget actually gave the best uh, SD on velocity and the best accuracy. The 27 grain load that I tested was basically above the published SAMI pressure, so I knew I had to be a little bit careful. I worked up, shot five shots across the chronograph and had an SD of 7.6 feet per second with an extreme spread of 17 feet per second. For an AR-15, that's really good. The velocity landed at 26.02. And so I thought, well, if it's supposed to be up near 27.50, a couple things going on. I'm assuming Hornady is testing with a 24 inch 
pressure test barrel in their test lab. So there's two things there. You've got more barrel length and you don't have the gas system on the AR subtracting some of your velocity because it takes pressure to run that DI bolt back. So, and I found that to be about 1.15%. That was the difference that I saw with my two 24 inch 224 Valkyries, the bolt gun and the AR-15, where the AR-15 had about 1.15% less. And so what was interesting was this was really close. This was within 10 feet per second, this observed velocity compared to the quick load software projection. I think quick load had it slightly higher. But based on a tweaked 6 PPC, I was, I was pretty impressed with that. And I got the best accuracy result from that Varget load. The very first five-shot group that I shot after my side in this is during break-in, was 0 0.610 inches. That's uh, 0 0.580 MOA. For any AR, that's an absolutely outstanding result. And I had mostly stringing in the vertical. This is all suppressed with the Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 Cal Can. Mind you, just as a note, I took the suppressor off and did a little bit of shooting. It didn't really seem to do much with that. And then I took a look at another obvious solution, which would be H4895. And shot a few shots each over the chronograph. I had to be a little bit sparing because I only had one pound, actually less than it. This is an opened pound of H4895. And what I worked up with for that, showing mild pressure signs, a little bit of ejector stamping on the case rim, was 26.6 grains, which yielded 2631 feet per second. And I was able to get a 0 0.750 inch group for five shots at 100 yards. Let me show you that shooting sequence. So I wanted to take all of the variables that I could out of the accuracy equation. So I'm using this Mystic Precision Bipod. This gives the AR a really wide stance on the ground. It's going to help counteract the torquing and the slop that you'll find inherently in an AR between the upper and the lower. I installed a Trigger Tech AR Diamond Trigger and I went so far as to single load the rounds just to rule out any cocking of the bullets. Adding, in, adding to the run out equation for those. And a 0.7 MOA result, I'm actually quite happy with that as well. I think for this type of a rifle, a semi-auto rifle, that's really good accuracy and I got good velocity. And then my second bullet that I tested with was the Burger 95 Grain Classic Hunter. And this time I used TAC, Ramshot TAC. TAC is right next to H4895. It's a ball powder, whereas H4895 is a short stick powder. And again, with all of these, I modeled these in the quick load software. I'll go on to an analysis after I go over these initial results. The velocity data was really amazing with the TAC and the 95 grain Burger Classic Hunters. I saw 2861 feet per second with a 95 grain bullet. That is absolutely cooking. I've only shot two groups with it and it looks like I need to do some load workup with that bullet and that powder combination because my groups were a little over an inch, about an inch and a quarter. Now again with the AR-15 you have to really use a different shooting technique and you have to work a lot harder to get those smaller groups. Anything really under an inch is really good. So I'll have to reserve judgment on that bullet and ramshot tack powder as a combination, do a little bit more load workup. Again, this stuff takes a lot of time. 
Uh, what I would like to do as well is use the ram shot with the heavier bullets to see how that would work as well because it might squeeze a little bit more velocity out of this 20 inch AR-15 with those 108 grain ELDM bullets. Only time will tell. So based on that, I want to walk you through some quick load analysis to talk about whether or not I feel like that 2750 FPS number is real and accurate. Let's do that next. So in typical engineer fashion, I've done a complete workup of the modeling that I did in the quick load software, the real world results that I saw with this 20 inch AR-15, and how feasible this Hornady 2750 feet per second number is. So I'm gonna go through all of the specs real quick once again. Firearm, CMMG Endeavor 300, 20 inch barrel, one and seven and a half twist. Bullet, Harnity 108 grain ELDM, which is what they've published their data with. The case was one time fired, one X fired Hornady six arc factory brass. The powder was H4895, which I think is probably what their factory ammunition would be using something similar to that at least. The powder charge was 26.6 grains. This is over pressure. Again, do not use this low data. Primer was a CIBR4 bench rest primer and the cartridge overall length was 2.260 inches. I loaded it to magazine length so that I could avoid pressure issues and push the velocities to the maximum safe limits. So the quick load velocity for this 20 inch barrel setup was 2640. The quick load pressure was 61,434. Again, I'm not saying that this load data is something that you should use, you should not. <laughs> the observed velocity was 2631. So we only had nine feet per second difference between what I calculated with the quick load software using a modified six mm PPC cartridge and what I actually saw with the chronograph. That is really amazing. And the approximate bolt action, if we add 1.18% to the velocity, would be 2661.2. So that would be a velocity that would actually be over what quick load calculated, because quick load does not take into account the gas system on the AR. The quick load velocity, if I extrapolate that for 24 inches, is 2733. That's straight out of the quick load program. So the quick load delta from 20 to 24 inches is estimating 93 feet per second that you're going to pick up for that four inches of additional barrel length. So the estimated real world velocity for a 24 inch AR-15 would be 2724. 0 0.0 feet per second. And if we add that 1.18% back, taking away the gas system, assuming we've got a 24 inch bolt action rifle, which is a feasible thing to publish performance data for, the estimated 24 inch real world bolt action velocity would be 2754.26 feet per second. So, six arc performance data fact or fiction, I'm going to call this one fact. And I'll also note that I did not see excessive pressure signs that were concerning and this ammunition functioned well. I had a couple stove pipes over the course of my testing, but the factory version of this rifle is actually going to come with an adjustable gas block. This does not have this. This is an early production unit. So I'm guessing with some tweaks, that was, you know, with the suppressor, I'm guessing that that uh, would definitely not be an issue, and it's possible that these velocities could be pushed even further. With more powder experimentation, this ramshot tack, for instance, for your own gun, taking your own <laughs> safety into question, you can work up a load that's likely going to exceed the performance that Hornady published, but only time will tell. I like to base everything on my own firsthand experiences which is what I've done here. So, what's next? A couple things. First, I'm gonna have an in-depth overview of this CMMG Endeavor 300 20-inch six-arc 
AR-15. They've also got a Resolute model that's available. This is the one that I'm going to focus on. We're going to take it out to greater distances. We're going to evaluate its performance in greater detail and go over all the speeds and feeds, fact and figures. I'm also going to do more load development and take a look at what does the performance look like at 600 yards, at 800 yards. What would the velocity be and what would the trajectory be at 1,000 yards? 1,000 yards may be beyond what the practical, usable range would be for this particular cartridge, but I know that that's something that people are wondering. Also, I'm planning possible additional content. I'd really like to build a bolt-action rifle. I'd like to see just how accurate this cartridge can be. Can't do that without a precision bolt-action rifle. If you saw my six dasher rifle I recently built that was shooting down in the zeros, I'd like to be able to take things from an equipment perspective to that level. And hopefully that gives some of you that have been complaining about my high-end content a little bit of insights into why I use high-end laboratory instruments and why I'm obsessing on these precision rifles. It's if you really want to evaluate something, a powder, the performance potential of a particular cartridge, bullets, you want to take as many of those other variables out of the equation, taking the shooter out of the equation and taking unnecessary rifle variables out of the equation. That's my true passion is to boil all these elements down and to give you all better data than you'll find anywhere else. My question for you, a couple questions is, A, what do you think of the results that I've gotten so far? Is it what you were expecting? Is it better or is it worse? Would you use a different powder? Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Second, what else would you like to see in this series? Drop a comment and we'll discuss that as well. Don't forget, I've got a lot more related content coming up, so you're going to want to subscribe with notifications. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, at the Ultimate Reloader store, I've got the Ultimate Reloader shirts. I'm on Patreon. There's also a link in the video description to a more in-depth full article. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.